Good morning and welcome to St Altman's Church. My name is James, I'm the Associate Minister here at St Altman's. It is wonderful to be worshipping with you here in the building and worshipping with you wherever you happen to be watching on our YouTube channel as well. Um, contrary to our opening credits, we are not on our summer series. We are beginning the first in our series of our faith series, this time looking at faith at school. Um, as our first in the series of that and a little later on Jason will be coming to speak to us and our worship band led by Aidan this morning will be leading us in our sung worship as well. Shall we begin our service together in prayer? Merciful God, your son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Wherever you are, whether you're worshipping here with us in the building or watching from home, um, please do send in your comments and your prayer requests to us on our YouTube channel. It would be lovely to get your feedback and your prayer requests so that we can include them in our intercessions later in the service. But right now, we're going to continue our service with some singing led for us by Aidan and our worship band. like to stand. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth. That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus.
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen at the sweetest of love, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Sweetest of love, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Comfort.
And so we come now to that point in our service where we bring before God all those things for which we are sorry, all those things for which we need to ask his help. Where we bring before God all those times where we have made things more important than him. And we give thanks for the fact that God's love never gives up, never runs out. God's love is always there for us. In a moment of quiet, we bring those things for which we need to ask God's forgiveness to our minds now. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. 
Have mercy on us according to your great love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. Gail is going to come and do our reading for us now. Good morning, everybody. This morning, our reading is from Luke 2, um, verses... Verses, James? 41 to 52, there we go. The boy Jesus at the temple. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Thank you, Gail. Um, we're now going to have our creative activity um, for the week, which this week is being brought to us by the Hayward family um, and should be appearing on our screens any moment. Hello. Welcome to the crafts, the craft slot, the craft zone. What is it? Welcome to Sharon's creative slot. But Sharon's on holiday, so we've got Paul and Chip. And coming, not from church, but from the Hayward household today, Right then, Chip, what are we doing today? You're going to school tomorrow, are you? Yes, you are growing up rather quickly, aren't you? Um, do you need to take a bag to school tomorrow? Would it help if we packed the bag today? Then you wouldn't be running around tomorrow and worrying. Is that a good idea? All right, then. so I've got myself a bag. Is this, is this going to be big enough for you? Um, it's quite, it's quite a big bag. Um, is this, is this right? Okay. Right, now you, you've got a list, have you? You know what you need to take, you've thought of the list. It's in your mind. Maybe you should have written it down, but, all right then. Come on then, pass me the things that we need to take. Pencil case, yeah, definitely need to take a pencil case. School books. Oh, I definitely recommend this book. Yes, definitely. Right. And then this, oh, and your reading books. Oh, yes, reading book. Oh, I remember reading this one. And then we've got the, oh, you're doing very well on the reading. If you've got to 12B already, wow, you are doing well. Okay. And then we need a few glue sticks. All right, we'll put a glue stick in. Another, another glue. Hey, all of these glue sticks. You can never have too many glue sticks. All right. Okay. This this bag is starting to get rather full, you know. What else have you got? 
a light, a torch. Oh, you you want to shine like a like a light in school? Yes. All right then. Put I'll put it in the bag. All right, I'll put it in the bag. This you do. It is getting rather full, you know. Come on then. What else have you got that wants going into this bag? Water bottle, definitely. Should always have a water bottle. Okay. Uh, not sure school would be happy you taking a whole packet of biscuits into school. All right then. I'm not sure about that, you know. Mm. What else is he coming? A toilet roll. Do you, do you know that schools do have toilet rolls? Mm. All right then. Oh, what else is he going to come back? Another toilet roll. Okay, another toilet roll. All right, in it goes, in it goes. Come on then. Well, I think you need to start taking some sensible things with you, you know. Not so much that... More toilet rolls. Oh, that's it. This bag, it is, with all of these toilet rolls, it is getting rather full, you know. What? Next. Bible. You want to take a Bible with you? That Bible over there? That one? Are you sure? You know, it it is a bit of a big Bible. Are you are you really sure you want to take? Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh. Yeah. All right then. Look, you've squashed the toilet roll now with that big Bible. Come on then. What else do you need to take to school? A jumper, in case it gets cold. Why don't you fold up your clothes instead of just screwing them up and shoving them in the bag? All right, there we are. This bag is getting... What's this? Oh, it's a fluorescent jacket for when you're walking home again, because it gets a bit dark. Yeah, all right. You may be taking too many things, you know. What, what else have we got? Well, Pop, you want to take this? Ah, you want to take something in case it rains. Well, what about, do you want to take a, um, a, a wet waterproof? No. You want to take the umbrella? I think you look a bit silly carrying this umbrella. All right, okay, in, in the bag it goes. Ready? Okay, in she goes. Right. Is that it? Have you got enough stuff in this bag? Shit. Oh, that is a very heavy bag now. That's very heavy. Um, do you really need to take all of these things to, ch to school with you? No? I think... What about... Do you need the light? The, the torch? I think, because of how you act, you've got God inside of you. And you will shine out what God is like to all your children. So I don't think you need to take a torch with you. Uh, what else have we got in the, in the bag that might be... That Bible was pretty big. Do we really need to take a Bible to school? I mean, you know, look, you know lots of Bible verses, don't you? No. Tell you what, do you know lots of songs that quote the Bible? Because those are all good Bible verses, aren't they? Yes, they are. Like, this little mite of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So you do know an awful lot of the Bible. You don't need to take it with you. Um, what else have we got in there? Mm. I think... 
If you just take your books and your pencils, you should be all right. Because no matter where you are, you've got God with you, haven't you? Yes, you have. And no matter where you are, at home, at school, you've got God with you. Hello again. Right, now we need to actually do a craft. Naomi. Now, Chip's not very good at folding paper, so Naomi is going to show me how to make a bag. Go paper on bag. then. A paper bag. So what do you do? So you... Put some crumbs on it. So uh, first of all, you want to fold it into a tube with about a two centimetre overlap. Right. And kind of make a slight overlap. And this will determine how big your bag is. So if and you want a wider you, bag... So you fold it over and you just crease it down sides? Crease it. Right, OK. And then take your glue stick and ah. you want to glue the joint. OK. Glue the joint. See, I'm, this is why you do craft, which is why I don't do craft in Twinklers. Right, so there it goes. I, I think I've just glued the front to the back. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's no, it's not fine because that means I don't have a tube. I have a, a right, sheet of paper. A sheet of paper. Right. Okay. Okay. So now what? Now you want to fold up your bottom third ish. Bottom third. Okay. So it's a oh, fold it up. Okay. I've got it fold. Fold it up. So it should kind of be you've got. Oh. So you want the bottom third. Okay, I've got the bottom third. Yep. Bottom third, turn it. Oh, off. bottom third. And you want to unfold it again. Yep, I've got it. And you're folding corners. Fold in the corners. Yep. And both both corners. Both corners. Both, both corners. corners. And now this is this is the kind of fiddly part. So you yes. want to open it out. Mm. And okay. you want to fold the corner inside. Fold the so you kind of just tuck it in and okay, so you fold sure oh, the, the corner inside. So it's like that. And then, yep. oh, and I see, and then so you, you fold the triangle. The you just kind of fold it along. Other corner inside, oh dear. So you've got a kind of house shape. You've kind of got a house, yeah, the house with a broken top, that's fine. The house with a broken top, okay, we'll go that's with that. That's fine, because we're about to, if you've got triangles to go all the way to the edge, you then need to kind of fold in the corners anyway, so it's fine. So fold in the co top corner, half, half Just off. a little bit, just a little bit. You only want it to be just a little bit in, just to give yourself a straight edge. You've kind of mostly got a straight edge anyway. Okay, so yeah. folding in the top. Now you want to preliminary, no. Uh, so you want to just fold it in. This is based on how big your kind of flat side. How far across so, do we fold it? I've done it about that much because you basically, this is the bit you're going to glue. So you need it to be as much of an overlap as you can get away with. So if you fold this part over too far, you won't be able to fold that right. Bit. So you've got to fold it just enough okay. so that that can sit down. Okay, I yep. think I've got that. And then you glue. And basically glue as much as you care about. So you glue that bit and then you can actually you can glue that bit as well. Can I have a glue stick then? Yes, have a glue stick. Thank you. you. So there, I'm, I'm gluing that. And then it's all glued down. And then you glue some on the inside as well. And then, so then I very carefully glue that. Open it out. Oh look! You have yourself a little bag that hopefully you'll stand up. Okay, right. It okay. stands up just lopsided because the glue is on one side, so it's heavier on one side. But it, it will stand, kind of. It will stand up. Um, <laughs> I've made a drunk bag. <laughs> I don't think that matters. It's fine. It's a little upside. Right. What you're going to do now is take your bag. Is put the lid on the glue stick. Oh, sorry. Put the lid on the glue stick or else it'll end up like all the others. Take your bag and just draw on it. Now, I want you to draw what you would like to take to school. You could draw your friends at school. You could draw a packed lunch on your bag. You can draw anything you Pencil. want. Pencils. Draw on your bag what you would like to take to school or what you would like to take out for the day. Okay, there we are. Well, thank you for showing us that craft. And that's all we've got time for on this creative slot. So I'll see you again soon. Okay, bye. Is there room for one more? <laughs>
Amen. Uh, thank you, Paul, Naomi, Chip, and the magic bag. Um, that was a wonderfully entertaining, creative activity for us all there. And I'm going to hand over to Jason now, who's going to speak to us on our, top, our passage today. James, thank you very much indeed. It's great to be with you. My name is Jason, a member of the church here at St. Altman's. I also work across churches, uh, just helping them to share the love of Jesus uh, with others. It's a privilege to be with you. And uh, welcome, and my welcome, whether you are here in the building uh, or at home, it is good to see you. Uh, shall we pray together before I begin? Father, we thank you for all your goodness to us. We thank you that wherever we are, be it at home, at school, at work, your faith, our faith in you shows us your love for us. And so, Lord, we pray that as we come to your word now, you will teach us more of that love and our response of faith to you. Shape us and draw us so we are more like you, Jesus, by your Holy Spirit. In his name we pray, amen. I would just say, if the toilet paper in schools today is the same as it was when I was a kid, the toilet rolls are a really good idea. It's funny how the mind blocks out trauma, isn't it? I find losing things incredibly annoying. There's a unique nagging feeling that I get when I don't know where something is. It's fine when I, it's lost and I don't know, but um, as soon as I find something, or I'm going to find something and I can't, I can't rest until it's located. Usually, when you find the thing that's lost, it's where it makes sense for it to be. I remember one winter's evening, I got back uh, from work to the room that I was renting then, it was before I was married, uh, and suddenly I couldn't find my keys anywhere. And uh, there was only one room, uh, but I couldn't find them anywhere. I searched for hours and hours, a whole evening wasted, looking for these darn keys, um, and eventually I just went to bed, exhausted, fed up. I knew they were in there somewhere because I'd let myself in, for goodness sake, so they must be there somewhere, couldn't find them. Next morning I got up, drew the curtains, and there they were on the windowsill, and I hadn't thought to look behind the curtains. Of course, that's not always the case, uh, that you find things where they're expected to be. My A-level uh, music teacher regaled us for weeks with the saga of his lost credit card until eventually he came into the class once um, full of, of joy and said he'd found his credit card in the fridge. <laughs> we didn't ask. Um, at least when you lose an object, it tends to be in the same place that you put it. They're not likely to get up and wander off. Of course, that's not the case when you lose a person. The feelings of anxiety and pain and distress are also infinitely worse. This story, then, of Joseph and Mary's desperate search through the streets of Jerusalem is precious and poignant, not just for the pain of loss uh, and the joy of finding again, but because it gives us a pretty much unique glimpse into the childhood of Jesus. We know about his birth, um, but then there's a large gospel gap before his ministry begins. Now, there are many reasons why Luke might have thought it was a good idea to put this into his narrative. It tells of Jesus' growing stature and significance, both physically and spiritually. It marks his increasing authority and wisdom. He's developing character and self-awareness. He's beginning to glimpse the relationship with his heavenly father whilst he remains obedient to his earthly parents. But the aspect I want to focus on this morning from this passage is the way in which this story speaks about the times that we sense that we too may have lost contact with Jesus somehow. We're journeying along uh, and he's with us 
and we turn around and we discover that somehow, in some way, he's suddenly absent. So if you have ever felt or even feel now that Jesus has become distant, somehow lost to you, then know that it happens to the best of us. And know also that he may be found again. So let's explore how we might search for him. It, now, it would be easy to be critical of Jesus' parents here. It's astounding to our modern ears, perhaps, that they could have got a day out of Jerusalem, uh, travelling home from the Passover festival without actually noticing that he wasn't with them. But perhaps we shouldn't judge them too harshly. Uh, even when I was a child, we had a lot of latitudes. Um, I and um, my friends would walk to school over some distance uh, on our own, uh, would travel back again. We had quite a lot of latitude about what time we, we could be out of the house, uh, but not overnight. Obviously, if you weren't in by curfew, then you knew about it. So in Jesus' day, when there were large caravans formed for protection while traveling with men and women often traveling separately, and uh, children could be with, with either party, uh, with extended families, it's perhaps easy to see how Jesus could remain um, unaccounted for by his parents for so long. I don't think we need to call social services on them just yet. It is interesting to me, though, that it is Joseph and Mary who left without him, like some biblical prequel to Home Alone. They didn't check to see that Jesus was still with them and traveling alongside. They just assumed that he was on board. Uh, before they knew it, Jesus wasn't there. Whenever I lost something as a child, my, parent, my parents would ask me a question that I thought at the time was the stupidest question in the world. It is this, where did you last have it? Well, if I knew that, I'd know where the darn thing was, wouldn't I? Um, and the fact is that the stories of the keys on the window cell, and perhaps even more, the credit card in the fridge, show us that when you lose things, they tend to be because you're preoccupied. Uh, you put something down and then you carry on with your day, busy with your own agenda, and you realize that something precious has suddenly been left behind, lost to you. Someone once said to me that if you feel that Jesus is distant from you, it's probably not he that's moved, it's you. Uh, being separated from Jesus is, is, in, is quite a strange concept, really. After all, God is everywhere, isn't he? How can we be separated from God who is everywhere? The psalmist writes, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. In a similar vein, Paul writes to the Roman church, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? We cannot be anywhere where God's love and grace cannot reach us. Let me say that again because it's important. We cannot be anywhere where God's love and grace cannot reach us. But there are times in our lives when we feel separated from God. We don't sense his presence. Our prayers seem to just bounce off the ceiling. We find ourselves in a dry desert place, lost. And that feeling might be familiar to you. Usually it's because life has just got in the way. That may be stress, worry, grief, anxiety, hardship, anger. It might be busyness. It might even be that life's been going really well and you've just gone with it. However it happens, we stop checking in with him. We lose track of our relationship with Jesus. As quickly becomes abundantly clear, though, that didn't mean that they loved him any less. And neither does it mean that we love Jesus any less if that's the case for us. It's not a huge crime. What matters is what we do then. Mary and Joseph could have just kept going and assumed that he would turn up. 
They didn't. They looked where they were, and when they didn't find him, they interrupted their journey, they reversed direction, they gave their whole attention to finding Jesus once more. That's not a bad lesson to learn. Sometimes when we feel distanced in our relationship with Jesus, it's for all sorts of reasons. And the important thing is what happens then. We need to recognize the loss, to acknowledge its importance, and to act to discover and find him once again. Mary and Joseph turned their faces back toward Jerusalem. Perhaps, where did you last have him? Isn't such a stupid question after all. So Jesus' parents first seek him where they are, among their family and friends, and then they return to Jerusalem where they last saw him. And they look everywhere for a full three days. What words might we use to describe that search? Intentional? Determined? Focused? Frantic, maybe? There are different ways of looking for things, aren't there? Uh, Me, if I'm looking for something, there are no half measures. I look until I've found it, and I tear the place apart if I have to. Leslie loves it when I lose things. Uh, There are others, uh, and I must admit, I don't really understand this. Uh, They have this it'll turn up method. Uh, If you stop looking for it, you'll find it. Which is complete rubbish, really, isn't it? Um, If I sit down and watch the telly, I'm unlikely to find the keys that I've dropped in the washing basket, for example. Uh, We have something in our house called Josh Looking, uh, which is named affectionately after our son, uh, who looks for things, and it involves him standing in the middle of a room, uh, possibly with his eyes open, although not always, uh, and swinging his attention vaguely once around the room, not finding it, and then declaring it irretrievably lost. Uh, and then his mother will go back and find the thing first to crack out of the box. Sometimes things do just turn up. But when things really get lost, you have to do some serious looking. You have to consider systematically and thoughtfully where it might be. Uh, It might even be helpful to draft somebody else in to help you to look. A fresh pair of eyes on the problem. Leslie knows what it means when I yell, I can't find my wallet, which actually translated means, darling, uh, please, I appear to have lost my wallet. I wonder if you might help me to look for it. If we've been separated from Jesus for a short while, it may not take much to find him again. Uh, However, if it's been a while, we may need to really hunt. We may need to stop going in the direction in which we were going, interrupt our own agenda, reflect on what has led us there and reverse direction to the place where we last felt close to him. Where were you when you last saw Jesus? It's actually a really good question. You may need to draft in help from friends that you trust to help you to find him again. And we mustn't be embarrassed or afraid to ask for that help. And If they're going to judge you for having lost him in the first place, then they're not the right people. After all, your desire to find Jesus again is testament to your love for him. Think about the places and situations where you felt close to him most previously. Was it perhaps in in space? Was it um, in prayer with others uh, or alone? Perhaps reading particular parts of the Bible? The Psalms are often a good place to start. Perhaps a particular physical place, maybe on a retreat or a quiet day, or after speaking with a particular person. Sometimes, also, I think less is more. Give yourself a break. It might not be that you have to read four chapters of the Bible instead of three every day, or or pray for two hours instead of one hour uh, every morning. Five minutes spent peacefully with just a few verses might be a lot more helpful. It's okay to go back to the same part of the Bible every day for a while. In fact, again, that can be a good idea. Above all, sometimes patience is required. Mary and Joseph searched 
for several days. They had to search in places where Jesus wasn't before they found where he was. We too might need to persevere, to be gently determined and focused, to not give up. Eventually, though, however long it takes, Jesus can always be found. So after several days of intense searching, Joseph and Mary find Jesus. Uh, And this is one of those times where I suspect that uh, Luke's phrasing is somewhat shorter and more sanitized than the actual language used. Do you know what I mean? So his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Yeah, I'm sure that's a close translation of the Aramaic they actually used. Not. Uh, Even within these few words, there is a mix of anger and fear and relief uh, with which, if you're a parent, you might be familiar. They blamed him. Why have you treated us like this? And Jesus is a bit nonplussed, to be honest. Uh, They, after all, left him. He hadn't run off. Surely the place they should have looked is the place where he would be involved in his father's work. For Mary and Joseph, this would have been a significant moment. One of those moments where your kids come out with something really profound yet completely weird and you put it in the scrapbook. And later, perhaps when Mary and Joseph saw Jesus' ministry begins, they go, oh, oh yeah, now I get it. Now I see. I know exactly the turmoil of emotions that Mary and Joseph might have been through, although not for the extent of time that they did. One time, uh, Leslie and our two children had arrived at a seaside cottage with some friends, ready for a holiday. And uh, we were busily unpacking, and our daughter Jen, she was very small at the time, she got out of the car, and I just pointed her, shepherded her towards the cottage. Uh, while we unpacked and then a few minutes later I came into the cottage uh, and did that head count thing uh, and I went one oh and we lost one worst feeling ever in a panic I went outside only to find Jen in the company of two complete strangers just down the road who had seen her walking and turned her around and sort of put her back towards where she should be. Uh, I was relieved, I was scared, I I was angry, yes, uh, at myself, though of course that came out uh, at anger toward Jen. Uh, Poor girl was upset, um, surprised at my reaction. And of course it wasn't her fault, I sort of pointed her in that direction, she went where she was pointed. Uh, I'd taken my eye off the ball, or child in this case. Um, She was where it was sensible for her to be. It may not have been where I expected, But if I thought about it and paid attention, I'd have known where she was. Jesus was about his heavenly father's business. He might not have been where they expected, but he was where it made sense for him to be. And if we feel that we have been separated from Jesus, he might not be where we expect, you know, in the busyness of doing stuff for him, in trying to do increasingly more to please him. Rather, he will be where it makes sense for him to be, where God is at work in you. We will simply need determinedly and deliberately to find that place in us. That's the trick, I think, to seeking and finding Jesus again. Looking where it makes sense for him to be. Look for the places where you think God would be at work, and the chances are that that is where you will find him. Now that might look different for each of us. It might be in sharing a particular joy or a particular pain. It might be in searching for direction or decision or in a relationship, in whatever means, but it's where God is at work in us. So let's wrap up and see where we've been. Losing Jesus is a strange concept, isn't it really? You would have thought we couldn't do that, really, given that God is everywhere, and yet so often we manage it. We get preoccupied with our own busyness, our priorities, our agendas and choices, and 
decisions and we start to travel and we just assume that Jesus is with us and then suddenly we get that sense of dryness and loss and somehow we've begun to feel disconnected from Jesus along the way. It's more easily done than we might imagine as Joseph and Mary discovered. Happens to the best of us. What matters is what we do next. To stop and give our time and attention to once more seeking him. Not just hoping that if we carry on, that he will somehow turn up. We might have to search for him for a little while because we might end up looking where he isn't before we find where he is. Instead, it's good to seek him not in the obvious places where perhaps we might expect to find him, in our own plans and agendas and priorities, but rather in the place where it makes sense for him to be, about the Father's work in our lives. So here's the question I want to leave you with this morning. Where are the places in your life where God would want to be at work? And whether you find him close to you now or not, are you willing to meet him in that place to find him there? Amen. Um, for that very important message to all of us. We're coming now to our time of intercession and prayer this morning. If you have any prayer requests, please do send them through on our YouTube channel, um, and it would be great to include them um, in our prayers this morning. Let's pray together now. Father God, we just want to lift before you this morning all those people who have lost or who are lost or who currently feel separated from you. Lord, whatever they are searching for, we hope and pray that they will find you right where they are, right where you need them to be. We pray that they will find your presence, your love, your peace. Lord, fill them with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our world. We pray for all our governments and our health organizations as they look to continue to bring an end to the current pandemic. We pray for all those areas of the world currently suffering from natural disasters, hurricanes and floods, earthquakes. We pray for all those areas of the world where peace is yet to be achieved, where people live in fear for their lives or the lives of their loved ones. We pray for the day when all will live in peace and harmony together, Lord. And we pray for the work of all those who seek to bring about a better world. A world in line with the values of your kingdom. Give them your courage, your wisdom and your endurance, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all those 
who have started back at school, started school for the first time, or will be doing so in this coming week, whether as a student or as a teacher or in whatever capacity. Lord, we pray for joy. We pray for fun. We pray for new knowledge to be imparted, new friendships to be made. We pray for safety and laughter and learning. And we pray that they would all find you there in that place as well, Lord. That they would seek you and find you in this next great step in their journey in life, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our church. We pray for St. Altman's and all our church family, Lord. We pray for all those who we know are grieving at this time, for all those who we know are ill and suffering. We pray for our new vicar, Mina, as she prepares to finish where she is now and to journey and join us in November as our new vicar. Lord, we lift all our church family before you now, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we lift before you ourselves as well. Open our hearts to you. Open our lives to you. Help us to seek you. Help us to not give up until we find you even in the unexpected places. Help us if we feel truly lost, Lord, to remember those times and places where we felt closest to you. To seek others who will help us to seek you. And yes, Lord, help us never to stop until we find you again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray also for St. Anne's as they come to terms with the fact that their flying bishop, uh, Bishop Jonathan, the Bishop of Ebsleet, has made the decision to leave the Church of England and join the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, play, we pray for them as they digest this news and what it means for them as a church. And we pray for their continued flourishing as a church family as well, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Father, we pray specifically for Rachel Hurd tomorrow as she goes back uh, into hospital for another operation on her knee. Please pray that this operation, Lord, would be successful. Guide the hands of all those who will be helping Rachel tomorrow, Lord, and keep her safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're coming now to our time of communion together. Um, if you've not worshipped with us, I've done this in the wrong order. I have sanitized my hands, and now I'm going to put my mask on, and I'm going to have to sanitize my hands again. There we are. So we're coming now to our time of communion together. If you've not worshipped with us in the building before, or if you've not worshipped with us in the building for a while, um, please remain in your seats when it comes to the time of receiving communion until a member of our Verge team invites your row to come forward. You'll see um, some spacings on the floor um, to maintain social distancing. Um, please feel free to gather on those in your family groups. 
Um, communion is in wafer form still at the moment, and then I will bring it to you where you stand. But please, yeah, remain in your seats, and we'll come down the center aisle and then go back up the side aisles and back to our seats that way. But a verger will come forward and tell you when it's your turn to come forward. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, Make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. In this place and in yours, let us pray together with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts.
to another day I was so afraid Till you came and saved You came and saved me And the rain was pouring Cause the sun faded away Now I'm in a better place No longer afraid Blinded by your grace You came and saved me Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, that brings us to Church Family News. Love that reaction. Um, just a couple of notices, I think, from our church family news email. Um, we have our next quiz um, happening on Friday evening um, on Zoom. You can find details of that in the, in the email. And if you have a guest round to send to me for the quiz, please do email that to me as well. They're always fun to have, as well as saving me and Chloe a little bit of work preparing the quiz. Um, it will be great to have you with us for that on Friday evening. Um, we are also looking to bring back refreshments after church. It would be lovely to have coffee and tea after church. Um, again, we're looking to start that back up in September. At the moment, as far as I'm aware, we've had one person um, volunteer to do, um, start the hospitality team back up. That's not really a team. 
So we would love to start hospitality back up after church, but we do need a team. So if you feel able um, to join the hospitality team, please do email either myself or Pat um, so that we can get together a, vol a, a volunteer team so that we can start refreshments back up as soon as possible. Um, shoulder to Shoulder is happening on Saturday as well. Again, details can be found um, on the church email. But if you'd like to come and join Shoulder to Shoulder, they're meeting here at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Um, speak to John Hyde, who's waving. Um, so if you'd like to find out more about that, speak to John Hyde afterwards. I'm sure he'd love to fill you in on that. Um, I believe those are all the notices I need to uh, give this week. Um, so... We do have a guest with us um, here this morning. Hiya, Phoebe. Yeah. Are you coming and joining me for Church Family News? This isn't the guest I was referring to. Are you going to come and, come and help me talk to our guest? Yeah. Yeah, you come and join me then. There we are. Yeah? Yeah, that's Daddy's papers. Yeah, so he knows what to say. Because otherwise he rambles and talks rubbish like he's doing now. Yeah. So, do you know who our guest is this morning? Who have you been sitting with? Are you going shy now? Well, our guest this morning is going to come and join me up at the front now. There we are. It is wonderful to have with us this morning, Mina, our new vicar. Hello, everyone. It should be on. Excellent. Hello, everybody. It's really lovely to be here and to kind of see what it's like. I accepted the job and I'd never actually even seen the building <laughs> apart from on a video. So it's really lovely to see you all. And I can't wait to get to know you and to find out about everything that happens. I think I'm going to spend the first few months just going round everything and meeting lots of people and just seeing the lay of the land and then we can start to see where we go forward. But it's really lovely to see you all today. And um, 7th of November, so Sunday the 7th of November, here at four o'clock yes. is gonna be the licensing. So it'd be really lovely to see as many of you as possible here. Um, it's going to be a really good day, I hope. It's going to be awesome. And I hope there's going to be cake. Well, hopefully, yes. Hopefully. I mean, it wouldn't really be a celebration no. without cake, would it? As long as it's vegan cake, that's I'm good. I'm sure we can yeah. find some vegan cake. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, so, yeah, and if you are just say hello to me as you go past, that'd be lovely. Yeah. Thanks, Mina. Great to have you with us. I've got to find out where we are in the order. Yeah. So, wonderful to have Mina with us today, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we're going to stand and we're going to sing our songs of praise. Um, songs. Yeah, songs, yeah. Uh, we're going to stand and have our final time of song worship together now. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so Still you give yourself away 
shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me this place with a joyful noise now oh yeah so everybody need to get your clapping hands out we're gonna have fun as we leave this place and go into the week um so yeah let's go for it You 
will never run away, you're forever mine. You will never run away, you're by my side. You will never run away, you forever shine. You will never run away, you're by my side. Oh, oh, oh. It's our Faith at School is the beginning of our series, isn't it? And so you may have seen in the email and in some of our posts advertising this service that if you're, if you've Mina, just... Mina, Yeah, Mina had the microphone, didn't she? Yeah. That if you have started school, if you're going back to school, there was an invitation to bring your bags with you or to have them with you if you're watching at home. So if anybody is here in the building and they have a bag with them, and they would like to bring it down the front as we pray for everybody that's going back to school in whatever capacity. Do feel free to bring them down the front or just to hold them where you are. Um, so if you're a student, if you're a teacher, if you work in a school in any other capacity, we want to pray for you. No, you can't have the microphone. No. I know, you'd like to, but you'd chew it. Yeah. Right, so should we pray for everybody that's going back to school? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Father God. We pray for all the bags of everybody who is going back to school today. To, not today. Today would be a weird day to go back to school, wouldn't it, Phoebe? Yeah. Father, we pray for the bags of everybody who is going back to school or who has gone back to school in the last few days. We pray that those bags would be items of reassurance, of having everything that people need for the day. We pray that they would be symbols that they carry not only their books and their equipment with them, but that they also carry you with them wherever they go. Whether school seems a bit scary, or whether school is a place filled with joy and laughter, or both, we pray that they would know that you are with them wherever they go. And that unlike a bag that can be put down and picked up, your presence and your love will be carried in their hearts every day and that they can be beacons of that light and joy to everyone. Yeah, that's Ruth. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you can say hello to Ruth in a little bit. Yeah. And so, Father, we just pray for all of our students, our teachers, our school, admin staff, everybody who helps to bring the next generation that knowledge and love of learning. And we pray your blessing upon them now, Lord. Amen. Do join us for fellowship after the service if you're here in the building. And Zoom coffee, um, well, probably won't be beginning at 11.30, given it's 11.35. So Zoom coffee will be starting shortly, hopefully, um, and the information will be on. Just starting it now. Well done, Ben. Thank you. Very efficient from the back of church there. Um, so Zoom Coffee is just beginning. The details for joining it should be on your screens now or in your church family news email. It has been wonderful to be with you. And let's just say one final prayer. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless everyone. It has been wonderful to worship with you this morning. See you all very soon. <laughs>